Hello, my name is Cyril Wilson, Technical Marketing Engineer, Cisco Systems. In this video, we'll be discussing Cloud OnRamp for Multi-Cloud with Azure Virtual WAN. We'll show how Cloud OnRamp extends the SD-WAN fabric and policies to the cloud. We'll demonstrate how we securely connect to our Azure workloads and how telemetry and monitoring facilitate day one operations and troubleshooting. Let's start with a quick primer on Virtual WAN. Azure Virtual WAN is a global networking service that uses virtual hubs to provide a regional hub and spoke topology for connecting into and out of Azure. All virtual hubs within a virtual WAN are automatically globally connected using the Azure Virtual WAN backbone. These virtual hubs provide network service endpoints to allow for multiple connectivity options. This includes Express Rail Gateway for private circuits, Point to Site Gateway for users with Azure and or Open VPN, and Site to Site Gateway for IPsec. Now, thanks to our strong partnership and engineering collaboration with Microsoft, Cisco can also deploy Calus 8000V routers inside the virtual hub. This allows for SD-WAN connectivity and all of its benefits. By connecting workload VNets to the virtual hubs, we make them available to all the network service endpoints and our virtual routers, both locally and across regions. Let's take a deeper look with a typical use case. Here, our customer has an existing SD-WAN fabric, multiple workload VNets spread across several Azure regions. They want to make some of that workload available to specific SD-WAN sites. In our example, HQ does not yet need access to the cloud, but does use the SD-WAN fabric to communicate with the branches and vice versa. Using automation and REST APIs, vManage will send a configuration to Azure. This configuration will create the Azure Virtual WAN if needed. It will create the virtual hub and will instantiate a pair of Calus 8000V routers inside the virtual hub itself. This tighter integration negates the need for additional internal IPsec tunnels between our routers and the virtual hub, thus allowing for direct BGP peering. Again, using automation and APIs, we can take a subset of our workload VNets and logically group them using a VNet tag. We can now declare our connectivity intent for that tag, and in doing so, vManage will connect the tagged VNets to the virtual hub. The virtual hub will learn the tag VNet prefixes and use BGP to exchange those routes with our Calus 8000V routers inside the virtual hub. Now this is where our separate secure SD-WAN control plane really shines. Besides allowing for massive scaling and tighter key security, we can use connectivity intent and centralized policies to control access and direct traffic flows. Here the tag VNet routes are sent to our fabric, but only advertised to our select branches. Likewise, our branches will send their routes back to Azure. This will form data plane connectivity, allowing our branches access to our VNet workloads and vice versa. We can further restrict traffic by using centralized policies. In this example, only the dev QA branch should have access to the QA workloads. Our virtual hub is still learning the tagged VNet prefixes and using BGP to exchange those routes with our Calus 8000V routers inside the virtual hub. Using our separate secure SD-WAN control plane and centralized policies, we can block the QA routes from being advertised to the dev-only branch. This will form data plane connectivity, allowing our dev QA branch access to the QA workloads and vice versa. We do integrate transparently with Azure Firewall Manager and Secured Virtual Hub. We can use Azure Firewall Manager to create firewall policies consisting of rule sets. In this example, we want to be able to access our applications only on port 443. The policy gets applied to the virtual hub firewall, thus transforming it into a secured virtual hub. We can now access our workloads on port 443, but will be blocked on all other ports. Of course, we can use our Cisco ASAV or Cisco Firepower Next Generation Firewall or other third-party virtual appliances for deeper packet inspection. Furthermore, we can inject a default route from our fabric to the virtual hub. This will direct VNet to internet traffic across secure encrypted IP site tunnels to a select SD-WAN site. There, the traffic can be inspected using the on-premise security infrastructure. This also provides for inspection on the return path. Now, when we talk about secure encrypted IPsec connectivity between our branches and our cloud gateways, it's important to note that we have several transport options. We can use the public internet. We can also use express route and or MPLS or any combination, all controlled via policies 
and routing. We can easily replicate this topology and controls into other Azure regions. Since the virtual hubs are part of the same virtual WAN, they will be automatically globally connected using the Azure Virtual WAN backbone. We can now take one or more VNets in our new region and logically group them using a VNet tag. We can declare a connectivity intent for that tag, and in doing so, vManage will connect the tag VNets to the virtual hub and to the SD-WAN fabric. We could also take one or more VNets in our new region and assign them an existing tag. Since we've already declared our connectivity intent, vManage will automatically connect the tag VNets to the virtual hub and to the SD-WAN fabric. We can now use our separate secure SD-WAN control plane and centralized policies to control traffic flows based on customer and or application preferences. Our customer may prefer that some applications ingress and egress the cloud at the point of presence closest to the branch and ride the Azure Virtual WAN backbone across regions, whereas other applications should ingress and egress the cloud at the point of presence that's closest to the workload. We can also create centralized policies to allow branch-to-branch -branch communication across regions using the Azure Virtual WAN backbone. We can scale this to thousands of branches across dozens of Azure regions, all globally connected using the Azure Virtual WAN backbone. A multi-cloud dashboard and telemetry facilitate day one operations and troubleshooting. Our routers continuously send health information to vManage. This includes CPU, memory, interface, and tunnel stats, as well as general device health. This includes all hardware branch routers, as well as our cloud gateways, which also send information about their connected vNets. This data can then be aggregated and further analyzed to assist with baselining, trend analysis, and troubleshooting. vManage can also perform periodic and or ad hoc audits where it compares its configuration with that of Azure. If it notices discrepancies between the configurations due to inadvertent changes, vManage will report on the out-of-sync items, suggest remediation steps, and can even perform those actions for us. Our cloud gateways can also natively send telemetry data to Azure Monitor. This data can then be aggregated and sent to Azure Workbooks, where it can be further analyzed to assist with setting long thresholds, baselining, trend analysis, and troubleshooting. And now for a demo. To get to our cloud on ramp for multi-cloud dashboard, we have two options. We can use the panel on the left or the cloud icon on the top right corner. Here we see that our workflows are separated into four areas, setup, discover, manage, and intent management. Account association. In order to securely communicate and use REST APIs with Azure, we must first associate our vManage controller with our subscription. In Azure Active Directory, we have already created a service profile and assigned to it just the minimum permissions required for vManage to perform its tasks. We also have the four security parameters required for us to authenticate our Azure Active Directory and to acquire the service principle. We can input these parameters here. As we can see by going to account management that we have successfully associated our vManage controller to our Azure subscription. Now let's take a look at Cloud Global Settings. This is where we set the default parameters for our cloud gateways. This includes the software image. This is the version of the iOS XC software that will be running on our Calus A1000V routers. SKU scale. Each SKU represents 0.5 gigabits per second of throughput. Our current SKU offerings are 2, 4, and 10, which translates to 1, 2, and 5 gigabits per second. Keep in mind this is an HA router pair. IP subnet pool. Virtual hubs require slash 24 IP address range, which can be dynamically allocated from this pool. Please keep in mind these first three parameters can be overwritten during cloud gateway creation, as all gateways do not need to be on the same software version, nor do they need to be of the same SKU. This allows us to right-size our virtual appliances for expected regional traffic requirements. And we can overwrite the vHub address range to allow for more flexibility in our IP addressing. Autonomous system number. This is the BGP ASN number that our Calus 8000V routers will use to peer with the virtual hubs. Our cloud gateways can natively send telemetry data to Azure. We can inject a default route from our fabric to the virtual hub to direct VNet to internet traffic. Here we will not be selecting that. We can choose to have vManage perform periodic audits where it compares its configuration with that of Azure. And we can select auto remediation to have vManage automatically fix any discrepancies found during the audits. 
We have now successfully updated our Cloud Global settings. We can now create our Cloud Gateway. Like all Cisco SD-WAN devices, configuration starts with a template. Here, we could actually use our default Azure Virtual WAN template without making any changes to it whatsoever. As we can see, the template is quite simple. We don't need to configure interfaces, IP addressing, routing, nor VPNs. In this example, however, I am going to copy the default template to non-default template in order to make a quick edit. All I did here was change the admin password to something besides the default. Now I attach my device serial numbers to the template and enter a few parameters for our virtual routers. I can also preview the virtual router configurations. As we can see, the serial numbers have been attached to the template, which is just waiting for a device to come online and claim the configuration, which is what we'll be doing now by creating our Cloud Gateway. We'll input our Cloud Gateway name, optional description. This is our associated vManage account. We must choose a region. I can use an existing resource group, but here I'll create a new one. Same for the virtual WAN. I will overwrite the IP addressing. And now all we need to do is enter the device serial numbers that we just attached to our template. We can now create our Cloud Gateway. This will take a few minutes, but we can see that our Cloud Gateway has been created. If we go to the Azure portal, we can see that we created a virtual WAN, a virtual hub, and we can see our network virtual appliances. What we can't see are any connected VNets. That is because we have yet to declare our connectivity intent. On our Cloud OnRant for multi-cloud dashboard, we can see that we now have a Cloud Gateway. We have zero VPN tags or VNets associated, and we can also see this information summarized on top. If we use our vManage SSH tool to log into one of our Cloud Gateway virtual routers, we can see that we have configured the interfaces and the IP addressing, but no routing. Let's discover and tag some VNets. Here I can see my Dev1 and QA1 virtual networks, to which I'll assign the Dev QA tag. If I go into the Azure portal and look at the virtual network, I can see that the tag has been applied. Connectivity intent. If we use our vManage SSH tool to log into one of our branches, we can see that we have two routes. The first route is its local route, and the second route is that of the other SD-WAN site that's connected to the fabric. We do not see any Azure workload VNet routes. Let's fix this by declaring connectivity intent. Here we see that our mapping has been successful. In our Cloud on Ramp for Multi-Cloud dashboard, we can see that we now have one VPN, one tag, and two connected host VNets. In the Azure portal, we can now see that we have our connected virtual networks. We can also see this information graphically in Insights. If we log into one of our Cloud Gateway virtual routers, we can see that BGP is now configured. And now back to our branch, we can see our Azure workload VNets. This means that by using our Cloud on Ramp for multi-cloud workflows, we have successfully connected our select SD-WAN sites to our desired VNets. Now let's take a look at telemetry and monitoring. Here we can see our virtual routers. These are the SD-WAN sites that are connected to the SD-WAN fabric and for whom we've declared our connectivity intent. We can also drill down into our cloud gateways to get additional information such as traffic statistics, settings, and associated VPNs. If we scroll down, we can see the individual routers that make up our Cloud Gateway and access their system dashboard. Here we can see memory, CPU, interface and tunnel stats, amongst others, and we can use our real-time troubleshooting tools. If we scroll further down, we can see more details about our connected SD-WAN sites and associated VNets. Our Cloud Gateways can natively send telemetry data to Azure. To see this data, we must create metrics. First, we select the network virtual appliance that we just created. Next, we choose the metric namespace. Here, we'll choose CPU and average utilization. We can now visualize our data. Let's add another metric. This time, we'll choose memory. We can pin this to the dashboard, and we can send this to Azure workbooks for aggregation, retention, and further analysis. 
This concludes our demo and our video on Cloud on Ramp for MultiCloud with Azure Virtual WAN. If you'd like to try this yourself, we do have a hands-on sandbox demo that does not require an Azure subscription nor Cisco licensing. Please see the link below. Thank you for watching.